Hello and welcome to my Crown Trick Familiar tier list and best choices guide for playing on the hardest difficulty. I'm your host, Mefu. So in this tier list guide, I have ranged all the familiars into four different categories. C tier, which is the worst of the tiers, then to B, then to A, and all the way up to S tier, which is the best of the tiers. I'll be going in order from weakest to strongest in this tier list video. I've rated them based on viability throughout the whole run and how well they do on bosses. Since the little monsters are trash in this game don't tend to be the main reason you died, it's normally the bosses that end most runs. The tier list guide is based on my opinions and judgments I made whilst playing the hardest difficulty and what was giving me the easiest time and most success rate whilst I was playing. Starting off with C tier, this is the trash tier. This is where all the worst familiars come and hang out with each other. The Lord of Trash himself, Windblade Overlord. This guy is absolute rubbish. Windblade Overlord's first ability is Summon Storm. What this does, it creates three little tornadoes that go in a gradual line towards someone and it just tickles them. I think I've seen Munster stand here being like, oh, what's this lovely breeze in my face? Oh, this is really lovely. Which is perfect for a hot summer's day. But when you're trying to kill monsters, it's not as perfect as you might think. So the second ability is called Gales. Uh, this is like a demonic stance, like a really super budget version. You cast it on yourself, it gives you a buff, you attack three times with it, it will AoE everything around you, it does bare minimum damage, it's really not worth casting or even wasting a turn on. And this is why Windblade Overlord is sitting as the undisputed king of the trash tier. So next up we've got the Mad Pharmacist. So I really want to like this guy, I love using poison in games. But unfortunately, his kit really falls short. It's like anything he can do, someone else can do better. So his first ability is called Venomous Bite. What this does, it generates a poison tar on lethal enemy. What would have made this ability better is if it just generated poison tars in the first place. And that way, if the enemy needed to get to you, they would have to cross over the poison tars. But as it stands as it is, there's no impact damage on it. It's a damage over time effect that costs about 50 mana, which is really expensive what it does. Poison Destination. So what this does is applies four stacks of poison and plague to the target. When the enemy dies with this debuff on, it will spread to all the enemies around it. The problem with this, it doesn't take the stacks on the enemy. So even if they're on 150 stacks, it will only pass over the 4 stacks anyway. Which unfortunately makes Mad Pharmacist the second worst familiar in the game. Right, so Ghastly Sharpshooter. This looked pretty cool on paper. I was like, oh, I can be like some sort of sniper elite ghost warrior using these abilities and stuff. But in actual fact, it turned out really rubbish. Soul Eater Arrow. This is Ghastly Sharpshooter's first ability. The problem with this skill, it doesn't actually do a lot. You can do the same amount of damage with a rifle, and rifles have no mana cost. Element Coalescing. So this looked like it was going to be really good on paper, but it just didn't really do much damage either. Like, none of the abilities do damage, and this uh, familiar has no utility at all, so there's no point taking it. And this is why Sharpshooter is in Tier C. Right, so now we have Shun. The best of the worst of C tier. This guy, once again, he looked really good on paper, but his abilities in general just weren't that great. Straight and true, Shun's first ability. I fear no man, because I am invincible. But the problem with this is that you still get the status debuff, so you're not actually invincible. So in this example here, I'm about to get silenced. Even though I've immuned it, I'm still getting the debuff of the silence, which really, really sucks, because you think, if you're invincible, you should be invincible to everything. In this example, I'm getting a poison debuff. Even though I blocked the whole attack, I'm still getting that poison status debuff, which makes this ability really rubbish. Shun's second ability, Half Moon Slash. So this actually looked really cool. I was just like, damn, it's going to hit so hard. But in reality, even if you hit them perfectly at the edge of the uh, attack, it only hits for 140, so it just does double the damage. And that's only if you hit them on the edge. So you literally have to either waste a blink or somehow line it up perfectly and the range isn't that great and it's just yeah it doesn't got that much aoe and this is why shun is the top of the c tier moving on to tier b so these guys are no slouches they're actually pretty damn strong i mean they're not strong enough to be in tier s but with the right relics and with the right weapons they can easily be a tier a familiar well some of them can so at the very bottom of tier B, we have Nightmare. A lot of people would disagree with me about this choice, but I feel like this is really fitting for him to be in this position. Nightmare's first ability, Chaos Nightmare. So it hits in a cross shape, it has a fairly good range on it, and it does really respectable damage. The only problem with this ability is that it's really RNG, really random. You don't know what element you're going to get. Some mobs and some bosses are immune to certain types of elemental effects. 
So sometimes you get the wrong one and some of the elemental effects aren't as strong as other elemental effects. So say for example you wanted the lightning for the paralyze, you might end up getting the water and then you just be like, oh, okay, I didn't want that one. And uh, yeah, it's just it's a bit RNG for my liking. I don't like uh, random abilities. Glacial Barrier, Nightmare's second ability. So this has a lot of utility. You can do so many tricks with it. You can kite around it. You can delay time. You can block out some damage. You can stop them getting to you. The only problem with this is there's loads of times where I'm thinking, why am I casting this when I could probably kill them? Sorry, Nightmare, you're pretty cool, but you're staying in tier B for now. Make way for King Octo. King Octo, this guy is what poison octopuses around the world aspire to be. So first ability, Poison Meteor. So this does quite respectable damage. It leaves puddles of poison everywhere so they have to walk on it. But that's not actually what makes him strong. What makes him strong is the cooldown on this is quite low and the mana cost is low. And then combined with second ability, Deceptive Poison Waves. So this thing has good damage. It has good area effect on it. It poisons them, and on top of that, it imprisons them for two turns. That means they can't move, which is great utility. It means you get more damage off. King Octo, combined with Poison Racks and Poison Weapons, can reach up to the A tier, but he has a long way to go before he can reach the S tier. But it makes him a very strong entry into tier B. So when Labyrinth made the song Earthquake, he made it for the Reaper of Pumpkins. Obviously not, but I just like to think that way. First ability, Terror Whirlwind. Summon a violent earthquake that affects everything in that room. This is what I'm on about. This is the earthquake. It hits really hard. It has multiple uses. You can literally hit anything in the room with this. Break shields as well. So if you get to the situation where you've got multiple things casting and you do this earthquake ability, you can actually get a multi-break off, which will give you a combo chain, which increases your damage over time. Second ability, Triumphant Charge. So this is a long range stun ability. It stuns for one turn. You can use it to break the armor a bit. You can do a bit of damage. And it's, uh, it's great for escaping things with it. If you don't want to use a blink or something, you could actually use this instead. So it's a really good utility ability in general. These two really strong abilities give Reaper Pumpkins his secure spot in B tier. Muhammad Ali himself, Hellish Boxer. This guy, I was really tempted to put him in A tier because with certain relic, he can become really, really, really strong. Okay, the first ability comes in two parts. So the first part is 100 strikes. It does lava damage, it will plant seed, it will detonate after seven turns and do massive, massive AoE damage to everything around it. So the second ability it changes into is called Rising Dragon. So this is a massive damage single target attack that hits from one tile away. Once you use 100 strikes, it will change into this, and once you use Rising Dragon, it will change back into 100 strikes, and keep going in that fashion. So in the game, there's certain relics you can get that will improve the familiars massively if you find them. So there's one here called the Infernal Fruit of Explosions. What this does is every time you do lava damage and apply that uh, debuff, you also apply another debuff that explodes three turns earlier. So it synergizes really, really well with uh, Hellish Boxer because you can just do so much AoE damage in general, which actually will put him up to about probably an A tier familiar just because of this relic. His next ability, Stance Change, isn't anything to write home about. You shift back one tile, so you move back one tile, you reset all your cooldowns for your skills and increase the skill power for the next skill used. This has really nice synergy with his main attack. It has great synergy with other familiars that have massive, massive damage abilities. And it also resets cooldown, so it's a really, really good utility ability to have in general. But even though Hellish Boxer has all his utility and damage, he still falls a bit short on the bosses because on the bosses you need more single target damage or ways to break their shield a bit faster so you can get them to the stun phase. Whereas Hellish Boxer is all about the area of effect. That's why he's still on B tier. Next up, we have Crystallized Frost. So in this game, Frost as a status effect is really strong. It gives you 100% crit when something's frozen, and it also incapacitates them so they can't move at all or hurt you. Ice Bolt. So, the way Ice Bolt works is you fire it off, it has quite a long range on it, it hits the first target, and then whatever is behind the first target will automatically freeze and take a lot of damage. So it's actually a really, really good utility spell. But it does not compare to the second ability, Cage of Eternal Frost. Attach a Cage of Eternal Frost onto the target that will activate in three turns, freezing all enemies in a massive, massive area of effect. This is really good on rooms with loads of trash and monsters in. It's really good on bosses as well, because it will freeze them, allow you to move and reposition yourself, and also enable you to get 100% more crits for the breaks. But this ability is incredibly strong, and this is why Crystallized Frost is in high B tier. 
Witching Crow, another one where I had a hard time deciding whether he belonged in A tier or B tier. Witching Crow's first ability is Flame Bomb. Attaches a bomb, has a three turn timer on it. After three turns, it explodes in a massive horrendous AOE, applies more explosions and flame bombs to more targets around it, and leaves a patch of fire everywhere. It's really, really devastating on multiple targets, and it's also really, really strong on just one or two targets. It's actually just good in general, apart from not on bosses. The next ability we got is Summon Servant. It summons a melee servant, has a chance to summon an elite melee servant. Only one servant can exist at any time. It has a really big range on it. It actually does really respectable damage. It breaks the armor of the enemies as well, so you can use it to like double team an enemy to break them faster. You also use it to bully block by putting it in the path of the enemy that's trying to approach you. The only problem with it is a bit squishy. When you're trying to um, actually use it to attack stuff with, you, it just dies really quickly. That's the only problem with this ability. It just dies really quick. It doesn't have a shield or anything to kind of mitigate the damage that it takes. So sometimes it gets one-shotted randomly or two-shotted. But if you use it on an enemy that's already been broken, you can really pile up the damage using this minion. This gives Witching Crow a respectable second place in Tier B. At the top of Tier B, we have Abaddon. This guy puts a lot of Tier B familiars to shame. He just synergizes really nicely with other familiars, so he is very good to pick. Abaddon's first ability is Missile Guard. Summon a ranged servant. Chance to summon an elite ranged servant. Only one servant can exist at any time. Really similar to Witching Crow's melee servants, but instead of being melee, it's ranged. So it means its survivability and life expectancy is a lot higher than normal. <laughs> so it means it's, it actually do quite a lot of damage over time. And on top of that, it synergizes really well with the second ability. Fire Shield. Apply a shield of flames for self and all minions. So this is what makes it so strong. You and your minion both get a 40 HP shield. That means your minion's range, he takes less damage anyway. If he does take damage, he's got 40 HP shield. And on top of that, you get to play a lot more aggressively or use it to mitigate other damage that you would have normally taken because you're absorbing the damage and not taking it to your HP bar. These two abilities and the synergy together is what puts Abaddon at the top of tier B. Now on to tier A, the elites of the familiars. So these guys are pretty much the strongest in the game. They're just slightly below the S tier familiars. And there's only a few things that makes them slightly weaker. So if you see them, they're normally quite good choices in general, depending on your build. This thingy looking chicken barely needs any sort of introduction. The swashcluckler, the lowest of the A tier heroes, but there's not that much in it. Backstep strike. So this is an amazing utility ability. You can do damage at the same time as avoiding damage, at the same time as rearranging your positioning. It's really, really solid ability. It's actually amazing. A lot of the time I will keep using the Swashcluckler familiar for the whole run just because of this ability alone. It's that good. It honestly is that good. Swallow Flip. This ability is incredible in the early and mid game. It will break bosses and minions like it's no one's business. If a minion or boss has two double down arrows or triple down arrows, it will break them even faster because it attacks twice, so it literally will instantly break them. It's crazy. It allows you to do way more damage, allows you to break faster and take less damage. It's this really, really solid ability. With those two incredible abilities, there's no wonder why the finger licking chicken is in tier A. Primordial Water Spirit, the strongest water familiar in the game. Also, the only water familiar in the game. The reason why this guy is so high is because he is a boss killing machine. Primordial Water Spirit's first ability is Bubble. Create a small bubble trap that grows every two turns at a designated location. So this ability is really, really strong. You throw down the bubble trap in advance. So you just prepare a tiny bit, but preparation. So the first stage will drench them. The medium bubbles will stun them for one turn and the large bubbles will apply three turns of stun. So what you've got going here is if you just have a bit of preparation and put it in advance, you can just set up like infinite amount of traps so the boss can never touch you. So in this example here, I'm literally just kiting through the bubbles, making sure he can't hit me. Every time he wants to get close, he needs to try and walk through these bubbles. And he's just getting stunned. And if I have any relics or any abilities that increase damage upon stun, it just, you know, keep hurting him. And this way, I'm not taking any damage. He's taking loads of damage and I'm able to break him as much as I want to and just keep preparing my bubbles and keep walking through them. This works on pretty much all the bosses in the game. Second ability is Water Dragon. Releases the Water Dragon, dealing 85 water damage to targets within four vertical tiles. If any target in the range is already drenched, generates a new Water Dragon. 
What makes this ability so strong is that you only need one target in front of you to be drenched. And that way, you can actually hit multiple targets with the same dragon. It hits really, really goddamn hard. For Idle Water Spirit's ability to make everyone super wet is its greatest strength. Fire Breather, one of my personal favourites, and it's not just because he looks just like my logo. He actually is a big red fire breathing machine. Fire Breather's first ability is called Fire Blast. It's a low mana cost, two turn cooldown, long range fire attack that leaves fire tiles on the ground. It synergizes really well with its other ability. Okay, this is the ability that makes Fire Breather A tier by itself. Potent Explosive Barrel. It has insane synergy with everything. You can use Shotgun, Rifle, Gauntlet, Spear, uh, your main ab other ability to trigger this off. You can even trigger it off using itself because it leaves like a massive explosive carpet of fire. It does loads of damage to the enemies walk through it because it leaves a nasty little dot in itself. And on top of that, the range is really big on it. You can also use it to body block people and make them have to go around. It's almost like an obstacle by itself. Unless they break it, they can't get past this barrel. It's really crazy. Even on the bosses, when they're using their spells and stuff, you can literally throw down your barrel and get them to explode it for you and just make them walk through it themselves. It's really, really strong, really solid ability. Everyone's favorite dragon secures his spot safely in tier A. Next up is Trickster. If Zeus had a body double, this would be the one. He is a thunder god in his own right. Trickster's first ability is Lightning Orb. This being an absolute beast of ability, it will AoE down everyone's shields, break it all, give you massive damage because of the combo factor of it all. And not only that, it slices, it dices, it makes waffles. Now I'm just joking about the waffles, but it does pretty much everything else. It's a really good solid ability for the short, mid, and most of the late game. It just absolutely destroys shields and gives you so many combo points. Gravitation Field tricks the second ability and it's quite stunning, literally. You do a massive AoE, you pull everyone in, it synergizes really well with Lightning Orb, so you can pull everyone in, gather them up, then Lightning Orb them down to break them even quicker. And it interrupts all abilities as well, so you can use this on bosses, really good utility, solid ability. Trickster is a shockingly good familiar, and that's why he's secured a spot in the A tier. Mech Unit MK404 is a top of tier A, and for good reason. His first ability is Spike, and it's not just a gap closer to close the distance between the target and do a bit of damage. You can actually use this to get out of the way of stuff. You can use this to bounce around the screen and break more targets, especially if you're using something with low mobility like dual daggers. It's a really good utility ability once again. Shadowy Assault, the second ability for mech unit. This is the whole reason he is the top of tier A. You become invisible, you increase your crit chance to 100% for 8 turns. The thing about this ability is, when you're invisible and you walk up to something and attack it, it can't attack you back until the next turn. So you can literally hit them, run away, hit them, run away, and keep doing it like over and over again. As long as you go into stealth first and then hit them, you can just keep doing it. The other thing that makes it really strong is that you can just go in stealth and wait for your cooldowns to come back on your other abilities. So you hit this, go into stealth, wait for your cooldowns a bit to the very end, and then you just kind of like blink in and you smack the person. And then they can't do anything about you again because they don't know where you are and you can do the same again and just keep going and going. It's a really, really solid ability. Mech Unit Stealth ability is so strong, I almost ended up putting him in S tier. But the reason I didn't is because his first ability is not as strong as the other familiars in the S tier. Uh... So we have finally reached S tier. This is where the gods live. This is the strongest familiars in the game. Knight of the Eternal Frost. With a name like that, you can't help but think he would be incredibly epic, and he is. Ice Nova, his first ability. This is like throwing an iceberg at someone. This is the thing that sunk the Titanic. It's so strong, so powerful. It has a massive AoE range on it, lands down, throws down ice tiles. Ice tiles, when people pass through them, they have a chance of getting frozen. Really, really, really strong, chilling ability. His next ability, Sleet. This is what Trickster is to normal mobs, as this is to bosses. When this hits a boss, with uh, depending how many ice tiles are around them, it will break the crap out of their armor and make them very breakable. This is why, or single-handedly, the whole reason he is actually in the S tier in the first place, because he can almost chunk armor by 10 or 12 at a time. If you actually time it perfectly well, you can wait till a boss is casting, and then just blow them up straight away and take away a massive chunk of their armor and start breaking them really quickly. So if you're having a bad run and you literally haven't got very good weapons or relics or anything, if you pick this guy up, 
you can use this to actually turn the tide in your favor. Further from the top, we have Mandragora. And there's only one sentence to sum this guy up, and that's Feed me, Seymour. Because this guy puts the little shop of horrors plant to shame. Mandragora's first ability is Breaking Thrust. This does a massive knockback in a 3x3 square area, stunning everyone affected. Targets knocked into objects will also take more damage and have even more stun duration. This ability is crazy good. Really crazy utility once again. It's just amazing. You can even combo it with your second ability to knock them through it and stuff. It's just a really, really good ability in general. Amazing. And it's not even the best part of its kit. Now for the best part of its kit, Wild Brambles. Generate a 3x3 three three square area of poisonous vines. These things can be dropped everywhere. You can drop them to stop people advancing towards you. And it lays out this massive little carpet of vines that poison and stun anyone that walks over them. Each tile will stun individually. It's almost like having water spirit, but even less set up. You can just do it anytime you want. So this guy wants to cast something. He can be like, Mandragora says no. Oh, uh, what? You, you want to cast something? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mandragora says no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you cast something. Yeah, here you go, buddy. Uh, Mandragora says no. Like over and over again, you can literally just Mandragora deny them flat out every time and just absolutely annihilate the fight. There's no contest against this plant. And that's why Mandragora, the carnivorous plant, is the third best in the S tier. Talon Cooler hasn't always been this glam. He was a drab little crab once, but he is number two on the S tier list. And for good reason. Talon Cooler's first ability is Charged Zap. So this ability has a chance to paralyze the target. After you use it twice, it will upgrade to Super Energized Zap. And this increases the range of the ability massively and takes away the mana cost and increases the damage. After that's done, it will revert back into Charged Zap again. Paralyzed effects are really strong in this game. It's one of the strongest debuffs. It stops your opponent from auto attacking you, so all they can do is cast spells until the debuff runs out. Earth Shattering Smite. This is the whole reason this shiny crab is here in the first place. This is an absolute beast of an ability. Put it down in a massive group, it will stun everything every other turn, or paralyze everything every other turn. Also does damage, break stuff. You can literally keep everything infinitely CC with this and just go away and start chipping at them one at a time. It's really, really strong. And if you time it well and try and weave in your attacks during the paralyze or during the stuns, you can really make the most out of this ability. So here's a boss fight using Earth Shattering Smite to paralyze and stun her every chance I get. I place it down, I weave it in my attacks whenever I can, so, and then every time it procs, it interrupts her cast or stuns her and paralyze her. She never really gets to really hit me in this fight at all. And you can do this with most of the bosses. You can literally keep them permanently stun locked. As long as you've got mana to cast this ability, it costs 80 MP. But as long as you've got mana or try and save up mana or have a way of regenerating the mana back, you can just keep a boss completely stun locked, paralyzed and stunned completely unless they're immune to electricity. Taloncrawler, the shiniest crab in the game. Crab hammers its competition to scuttle in at rank 2. Weighing over 800 pounds, coming at 12 foot tall, we have Demon Lord, the rank 1 familiar in the game. Demon Lord's first ability is Demonic Stance. Infuse yourself with the power of demons in 10 turns, increase your normal attack damage by 20%. After every turn, deal 19 fire damage to all enemies within a 3x3 three three square area around you. 30% of the damage dealt will be converted into a shield that lasts one turn. This ability is crazy. It breaks shields really fast, it breaks everything around you really fast, it gives you shields and it gives you 20% more normal attack damage on every weapon hit you do for 10 turns. I mean, just look at the damage I've inflicted in one break on that boss. Just from having Demonic Stance on, plus my normal damage. It's really crazy. So this is an overpowered trick you can do on the Demon Lord using Demonic Stance. So you just put the Demonic Stance on and you just keep walking away. You always say one tile in front and eventually you'll get their shield low enough so you can just turn around and break it yourself. It's really, really strong. Demon Lord's last skill is called the Arrival. So what this is, it's a massive, massive ranged teleport that does really big damage in a massive area of effect and stuns and also gives you back your mana and increases your skill power for every enemy in range of it. It's really bonkers, absolutely bonkers, insane ability again on the Demon Lord. 
Those two abilities are what make Demon Lord the number one S tier familiar in the game. And that wraps up our tier list for Crown Trick Familiars. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment if you disagreed with something I said or a placement of one of the familiars I made. And leave me a comment if you actually agreed with some of the placements I made as well. Anyway, take care. I'll see you next time.